Hello everyone, Mike Newfound Pass with another What Sold video. We got 20 items that sold on eBay and as the title says, wait till the end. We got a doozy coming up at the end, a really, really cool item. And I even clipped out the uh, haul video from when I got this item, when we purchased it. And I want to show that to you as well before I show you the sold item. But we're going to go through a few items, other items that sold first. First was this uh, El Rey Del Mundo cut glass ashtray sell an awful lot of ashtrays if you can pick them up for pretty cheap uh, sometimes not so cheap but uh, pick this one up for just a buck or two and it sold for twenty three dollars and five cents next up a pintail duck decoy this is a wood decoy hand painted uh, wasn't in perfect condition at all but people do collect these wooden decoys and we picked this up for just like three or four bucks so uh went ahead and picked it up got it listed up and it took a little while to sell but it did sell for twenty nine dollars and forty two cents Next up, I've tried my hand in these uh, tweed jackets, you know, and I'm not going to say I would never buy them again, but, you know, I'm kind of going to stay away from them, really, unless they're like new with tags or something, new old stock. But uh, they do sell, but, you know, we only paid like two bucks for this or two fifty because the the suits in my thrift store, the suit jackets and coats are priced really cheap. So it is worth looking through, but just be picky, you know, make sure there's no moth holes or anything. This one did finally sell for 20 bucks. But, you know, made a few bucks, but not really worth waiting around on. Next up, this, the Big Bopper floating cooler. Um, another one I'd probably pass on. We didn't pay much for it, like $7.50 or so. Uh, and it was brand new. Uh, just takes up a lot of space and just doesn't bring that much money. $28.21. So, yeah, pass next time. See the tag there on the bottom, brand new. It is pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, just didn't bring that much money. Next up, we, in one of the job lot bags we pick up quite frequently for just a few dollars, there was a whole huge bag full of Roomba parts. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and sold a bunch of stuff out of it. It has it had like sensors and, you know, parts and pieces and everything. And I, you know, divvied them out and listed them. The sensors sold instantly. I think almost everything out of that bag is sold instantly. And this was just kind of random parts and pieces that I just threw together because they weren't worth much individually, but, uh, it did sell for 20 bucks, definitely first class shipping. So a yeah, high profit margin. Next up an Avery easy pill address labels. Uh, this is number five, one, six, one, uh, one inch by four inch. I pick these up when I find them. I pick them up all the time for two or three bucks in my thrift store sold for $22 and 20 cents free shipping. These were really cool, bad picture, but uh, the Izod golf pants, these were vintage blue striped, brand new with the tags. Check that out. $15.99 when they were new from Woodward and Lathrop. <laughs> uh, that was on clearance at Woodward and Lathrop. Look at that price under there, $54 back in probably the 80s. That was like whew, a lot of money back then. Should probably did that picture as my main one. But yeah, just really cool. We only paid a few bucks for these. You can find vintage clothes quite frequently, brand new with the tags. But these, these were part of my clearance out because I just had them for so long, sold for 20 bucks. Cheap. Next up, another piece, piece of false graph. Uh, Good Life covered casserole dish from the Friendship, Friendship Collection, 1995. With a sponge paint. We picked up uh, five pieces of this stuff and almost all of it is sold. This I did clearance out for $19.99 just to make room, but still made money. Next up, a, another genuine OEM Nintendo Wii AV cable. Even if you don't know a lot about video games, like you're not comfortable buying systems because you don't want to test them or you don't know much about games and you just, you just don't know and you're kind of gun on this stuff. One thing that is pretty much bulletproof is AV cords power cords and controllers like if you're at a garage sale and somebody's been there and wiped out all the games well they may have some av cords in a basket somewhere you know how garage sales and thrift stores just have baskets full of this these cords and power cords and stuff just look through and find them i pick up these all the time for um, well, quite frequently less than a dollar but you know at most i usually pay a dollar or two for these and every time i find them i pick them up whether it's the wii nintendo 64 GameCube, all that stuff. Just keep an eye out for them, especially the Nintendo stuff. Probably even PlayStation stuff and Xbox stuff, but definitely Nintendo stuff. So, yeah, just keep an eye out. 
Next up, this was an awesome one, the Texas Instruments TI-8250 uh, calculator. This is a business calculator, 10 digit. Really, really cool. This is brand new in the box. I, for some reason, the condition isn't there. So we picked this up for about 10 bucks and it was in the thrift store. I opened it up, make sure, made sure it was really new and not just crammed into the, you know, used and crammed back into the box, but this was brand new. See right there, still had the plastic around it around the uh, calculator itself and the power cord was still bundled up in the bubble wrap and stuff. So that was really, really key. Uh, so yeah, I sold that for $86 and 13 cents. So that was a really nice sell. Next up this Panasonic, uh, hands-free headset for a cordless phone, actually a 2.5 millimeter plug or Jack. Um, I'm not sure if they make these anymore or not. They probably don't. Uh, but I picked this up for just a few bucks in the thrift store and, it was it was up for quite a while and it was part of the 1999 clearance and it sold 1999 another clearance item this levi's red tab uh jean shirt so it's just a long sleeve denim shirt uh, heavy duty buttons there's the red tag yeah just a decent shirt you know we probably had 350 or so into it and a part of our 1999 clearance next up the husky liners x act contour this is the front floor mats for a toyota tacoma 2016-2017 picked this up as a part of that um weather tech buyout i did this was a uh, you know it's, it's husky it's not weather tech but these are still heavy duty liners threw this one up and listed it for it got down to 83 dollars and 77 cents and that's what it sold for these are brand new in the package these were uh customer orders for a local tire shop that they didn't ever come and pick up so i bought every single one of them they had and have done really well on that lot. Next up, uh, I bought an AT&T cordless phone and many times, you know, you can sell them if they're complete whole, you know, you test them, put new batteries in them and stuff and they're worth selling as a whole unit. But many times it's more bang for your buck to part them out. And that's what this I did with this unit. I bought a whole kit, cleaned it up and parted them out. This was just the, the base unit, just the charger for a base, you know, nothing else in there, just the power cord and the the charging base unit 20 bucks and there was i think three or four of these plus the main base unit and all the handsets so i made big money by parting these out uh, versus selling it whereas the whole unit itself may have sold for 40 bucks 20 dollars each for these base units that's 80 bucks then the main base units another 40 dollars that's 120 bucks and then all the handsets another 15 20 dollars each so it adds up to 150 200 bucks after you part them out versus getting 40 bucks for the whole set so think about parting out stuff uh, especially if it's something heavy like a uh, say kitchen aid or sometimes even rice makers i was talk talking to a subscriber the other day tom and he was talking about how he had sold a bread maker uh zojirushi that he had you know, learned about on my channel as a whole unit. And that's great because a lot of times they're worth selling that way. You know, you can get a hundred, 150 bucks, but if they're just not quite up to snuff, think about parting them out. Is that bread makers, rice cookers? Yeah. Food processors, whatever. Just something to keep a, keep an eye out for. Next up is Hager pottery Ibex gazelle Ram. This is when I threw up here and I look through all, you know, sometimes it all runs together and uh, look through all my sold videos. I'm like, this seems familiar. Like I put this in the video before, but I don't know. I couldn't find it anywhere. I kind of skimmed through my, you know, last five or six what sold videos. And uh, maybe it was fresh in my mind because when I sold this unit, I packed it up. This thing was huge. It was a uh, 18.75 inches tall, which is pretty big. So this took a pretty major box to ship it and I packed it up like crazy. You know, I do this all the time, sell out. I sell fragile stuff all the time, coffee mugs, porcelain, ceramics, pottery. And so I packed it just as well as I could. It was going to Oklahoma, I believe. And it went FedEx because FedEx was the most reasonable uh, shipping option for big, heavy items all halfway across the country. And of course, when the buyer got it, it was just shattered in a million pieces. And I had packed the crap out of it. And they were, you know, ticked off, of course. But, you know, I immediately refunded them. I filed an insurance claim and I've already gotten the money from it and, you know, what can you do? That just stuff just happens. Next up, this brand new with the tags, Eddie Bauer, uh, full zip fleece vests. Uh, yeah. What can you say? 20 bucks free shipping. Yeah. Brand new with the tags. Um, I bought these. I thought I was going to wear these myself 
and I, cause I bought these on clearance at Eddie Bauer for literally like $12 and 50 cents each, but I ended up not, you know, I really don't like fleece. So I ended up, I was like, I'll just list them up. And I was hoping to get 25, $30 each out of them, but they just wouldn't move. So I cleared some out in 1999 free shipping and uh, got them out the door and just basically got my money back on that deal. A set of horseshoes, the horseshoes game. These were plastic by Franklin. And yeah, I got these for just a couple bucks and uh, yeah, sold $21.77. I sell all kinds of, of yard games, you know, whether it's horseshoes or croquet or whatever, just yeah, something to keep an eye out for. Next is vintage pair of maple wood shoe shapers. I paid just a couple bucks for these and these were definitely vintage. Uh, and these were part of our 1999 clearance and uh, you know, for what we had in them, what we got for them, that was a pretty, pretty good sale. Next up, this Fisher Price Rescue Heroes Micro Adventures Aquatic Playset. This is brand new in a severely shelf worn box, which is frequently the case when I find these in the thrift stores. I find stuff like this all the time in the thrift stores. I think I paid uh, 10 bucks for this or so. And, uh, you know, I always put down in my listing brand new and shelf worn box. Took a, while, a little while to sell, but it did sell $36.56. And the last items coming up is I'm going to throw it to myself about 10 months in the past to show you, you know, when we got this and what we paid for it. We got this awesome vintage seventies era blanket. You see the colors in that. It's like the green and this floor. I can't, you know, hold it out. I wish I could, but, uh, check out this label on this thing. This, uh, what's it called? Velen, Velon. Like I said, it's Greece, Greek. And, uh, the tag is in there somewhere, but we paid around 10 bucks for this and it's in really good condition My wife and I you know held it out and looked it over really well and uh, of course no exact comps for something so vintage like this, but uh, We are going to list this for $75 and uh, you know I'd always rather to start high and have to go down than to start low and go Hmm, maybe I left some meat on the bone there. So that's a nice one and did you like that? You, uh, you heard me say I paid, I think we could get $75. I'm going to list it for $75 or something like that. Well, that's just because preliminary research had only been done on that. As I delved further into this and I researched it, um, it was pretty rare. It's a pretty rare blanket. So I listed it super high. I think I started out like at 325 or something like that. And as you know, if you watch my channel regularly, I lower my prices every day on stuff that's priced $24.99 or higher now and uh this is what it sold for 277 dollars and 24 cents with free shipping but that's no problem at that price point right i think we paid 10 bucks for this this is just a super cool it was in really really fantastic condition this was definitely 70s era i mean my wife and i grew up you know we were uh toddlers in the 70s so we kind of remember this kind of stuff although not this exactly because this is obviously it was greek at least we think that was greek <laughs> This was just an acrylic blanket. There was nothing wool about it. It was just a you know mass manufactured blanket. But you know people have nostalgia. People have blankets when they were kids. They grew up with their family. They're like oh I have the memories, and that's what they're paying for basically is the memories. Two seventy seven twenty four. So that is it, everyone. Please remember to hit the like, subscribe button, hit that bell. We do appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Peace.